Hey everybody, Sean Johnson, Nerd Dad Extraordinaire here, coming at you with another WGU accounting video. Today I'm going to talk about D217 accounting information systems. Let's start off with discussing my thoughts on the class. I personally found this to be one of the most boring classes I've taken at WGU so far. I would say global business would take that spot because that class was extremely boring, but there was external resources I could utilize. I imagine that taxation would have been a pretty boring class if I had to read the textbook, but again, there were external resources that I could utilize. Unfortunately, in this class, you get the textbook and four cohort recordings. The book is a snooze fest. I would literally start reading it, I would read a chapter, and I would literally start falling asleep. That's how boring it was. It was, it's, it's not a good book. But I kind of have that feeling with all the Pearson books as long uh, with the McGraw-Hill books. I, I have never come across one of those in my whole college career that I was like, yeah, that was a fun book to read. The cohorts, the recorded cohorts are okay. Um, they're not great, and they only cover like really small sections of the material, so you can't really use them supplementally. As far as like the applicability of this course to the profession, I could see if you're really like a process analysis type person that you would do really well in this class, or maybe you'd get more out of it, or maybe you're like a technical development person. I don't know. That's not me. I, I mean, I, I love process improvement. It's one of the things I'm good at. But as far as like, I don't know drawing up flow charts and stuff like that like ugh, it just it was really boring not fun I didn't I didn't enjoy it hopefully you will so this was my longest course to date it took me two months three days to get through this course if you follow me on any other social media platform or if you are a part of that accountability group that I'm in uh, you know all my excuses and reasons you know, my kids are getting bigger, they're getting more involved with school and activities, and so that takes a lot of time. Um, I got sick with COVID during that as well, so I, I was sick for about three days total, but my total like recovery took about two weeks. And the holidays, we don't want to forget about the holidays. Um, you know, our family celebrates Thanksgiving and Christmas, so we're really busy uh, November and December just preparing for those things. All together, I'm hoping to uh, do better this term. This will be my fourth term. Uh, you know, I was hoping to be done sooner, but my stretch goal was to do it in a year, and my regular goal was to do it in two years, so I'm going to hit it by my goal. How I got through the course. I read the whole book. Yes, I read the whole book, um, even when I struggled to get through sections because it was just that boring, that exhausting to read. Um, then I uh, listened and watched the cohorts two times. As in, I watched one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then I took the PA and I scored to be what looked like a, I don't know, 84, 85%, something like that. Then I studied off of the PA. I studied both the things I got wrong and the things I got right because we all know that sometimes we guess and we get it right. And you really got to know the principles behind why you got something right so that you can, um, you know, dig into it more and like explain it to another person. That's, you know, what you're shooting for. Then I took the OA. The hilarious part about taking the OA is that I literally scored exactly the same as I did on the PA, which hardly ever happens. Most of the time when I study off the PA and I do some more study on my weak points, um, I score way higher on the OA. But that's just how difficult and like weirdly worded a lot of the questions were that even the study that I did off the PA didn't necessarily translate to what was in the OA. And, you know, the they kind of take subsections out of each part to test you on. They don't test you on like all the material. It's subsections out of all of the sections. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Um, I'm glad to be done with this class. I'm not going to lie to you. This next term, I only have six credits left. So that's going to be intermediate accounting three and auditing. And once I'm done with that, I'm done, done. Now, will I return to WGU to get a master's degree? Maybe, hopefully. I mean, I don't really know. Um, as of right now, I am not planning to sit for the CPA exam, so I don't foresee a reason why I would return to get the master's in accounting. 
but I am hoping to kind of move up in my organization uh, even more than I have. And, you know, with that, I guess an MBA would kind of make sense, especially because a lot of the upper management in my organization have an MBA or at least a professional certification. So that's the route I'll probably take. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Um, good luck. If you need any help, reach out to me. I usually try to respond to comments as much as I can, um, especially things that are like not as easy to find out. Um, something I should note, I've recently been seeing some comments of people asking me like, hey, Sean, I can't see this resource that you said is in the course. Like, where is it? Um, when you When you do that, please look at when I recorded the video. Um, I had a question like that on the taxation video, and I've not taken taxation. That was that was December of 2020, so it's been over a year um, since I took that course. And it's like, I don't know. Maybe they changed it. The courses are changing constantly. I wish you luck. Um, accounting Information Systems is not a fun class, but I hope you get something out of it that I didn't because I don't feel like I really pulled a whole lot out of it besides just like – basic transaction processing knowledge. And with that, this Nerd Dad Extraordinaire is out of here, and we'll see you next time.